Using church intimidation, controlling manipulation, Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew, can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God. I'm slaying you. Power of the word, two edged sword. MC Heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware, didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there, not getting down with your tactics. Undoctrinal no practice, rewind. Select up, bring it back. Heaven is on this track. No more games in my mind. God built me in the spirit. Division, corruption, strife. Hello, everybody. God bless you. Welcome again to the Crystal Jones Show, the show that's all about life's balance. Thank you all for tuning in again. It's another week, and this world is very chaotic right now. But we're thankful that, like I always say, we made it another day. Um, we're thankful for the good things that we still have and can look forward to. But there is so much going on, so much. Uh, the election and so many things. People have lost their jobs and uh, just heartbreaking things that are going on. Uh, the, the murders the things that are happening with the children, um, which I'm sure are related to, you know, issues of poverty and with people losing their jobs and things like that, um, things have really gotten bad. But nevertheless, we, you know, thank God that um, we're making it through and we're able to help, you know, pray for others and do what we can to help others that are in need at this present time. We are in the time, like I often tell you all, that's called Jacob's trouble. So this is what we're going through here in this country at this you know, present day and time. It was a time that was prophesied by the different prophets in the Bible that we would go through. Even Christ himself told us that there was going to be a time that we had never seen before kingdom against kingdom nation against mm -hmm. nation and how so many things would be going on but um he told us to look up for our redemption is drawing nigh uh remember i told you that we're existing in between worlds so to speak um they have also told us they also tell us that um they have a new world order in place, but that's not the world order that Christ speaks of in the biblical sense. But when we read the apocryphal books, it tells us in 2nd Ezra that Esau is the end of this world and Jacob is the beginning of the next. So, you know, the struggle goes on between the two brothers, Esau and Jacob. Yes, we are related, but uh, we have that struggle because for Esau... It's that instant gratification. Everything has to happen now. So that's that selfish mentality. And sadly, a lot of that is what rules over the world right now is that selfish mentality uh, that only a certain percentage of people should make it. And that, you know, anybody underneath those confines, they don't care about. So we're existing in that time um, and that type of attitude. And this is what you see going on with the people who, you know, feel they're above everybody. And so we're having to navigate through those type of uh, testy waters right now. And so um, I wanted to share with you all, uh, well, today we, we are gonna have a guest who has been on the show before who's none other than uh, Gerald Hoover. You all know him from the Hero Book series. I'm gonna be interviewing him in a little while and we're gonna see what's going on with the Hero Book series. So before that, I'm just going to um, read to you uh, different scriptures and explain um, what's going on today. Uh, the Bible talks about in the book of Proverbs, the 29th chapter and the 12th verse, if a ruler hearkens to lies, all his servants are wicked. So if we have people that are dealing unjustly and running governmental entities, 
then that tells you that their servants that are under them are going to serve that wickedness. They're not going to look out for the poor and needy. They're not really going to make sure that, you know, there's a, a fairness as far as people getting a shot in life. No, they are going to make sure that uh, prison reform is not really prison reform or only a few people make it through it or any other type of thing that they want you to feel like, oh yeah, we're really helping people in this area, but really they're making money off of it. And they're lying to the public saying, oh no, we, we don't trade bribes. We're not doing this. We're not doing that. But if a ruler hearkens to lies, all his servants are wicked. So it starts from the top. If the person at the top is not right, it, it corrupts the things that run underneath it. And so, as I often tell you, we are part of what happened in that contract agreement in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. God gave us that choice. He said, if you hearken to me and what I tell you, you'll be blessed. But if you don't, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be scattered to all nations. You're going to go in ships back to Egypt. And you're going to be with uh, uh, people over you that don't care nothing about you. And this is where we are today. And this is how we know who we are in the Bible. This is how we know we were the children of Israel. We're not the Gentiles that they used to tell us that we were. No, we are the children of Israel. Um, we were the ones that uh, God gave the promise to Abraham, our forefather, um, about how he would bless us to be kings and queens and you know uh, that Christ would come through that line of people. But of course our people um, rebelled and wanted to be like the other nations around them, worshiping idol gods, uh, doing things to their children. The things that you see being done with the children today, people tossing their kids, uh, killing them and stuff like that. That, that's, that, was, that happened in the Bible. So, it's like the same thing over history is just repeating itself. But now we know that we're not what, you know, every year, every couple of years, they change us from colored people to, then we be called black, then we called African-Americans. We have all these different names for us, but we are truly the Israelites that were the ones that came out of Egypt. And now we're over here in this land. We're the only ones that fit that description of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. So we lost the land that we had over there in today's, uh, what they were called Jerusalem. And of course it was overtaken by other people. So that happened during the Roman and Jewish revolt. And after that, our people of course scattered into other areas, Africa, all over the place, all over the world. We're over the four corners of the earth. There's not a culture that we're not a part of. And so we see our brothers and, and sisters in these different cultures, because remember the 12 tribes all look different now because we were scattered. We see Reuben who is in Australia, um, who suffers from alcoholism and um, different things because of what he did. He, uh, you know, uh, slept with his father's wife, one of his father's wives. And that curse came upon him when um, Jacob gathered his sons together to tell them what would happen in the end times. So we see that's what, you know, what came upon them. Simeon and Levi, those are the, the Dominicans and the Haitians. Yes, they are part of the 12 tribes. Um, they can't get along right now, but they're basically on the same island. Uh, Simeon being the Dominicans and um, Levi are the Haitians. And remember, through Levi was the Le Levitical priesthood. Um, but the reason why their situation is, is because of the things that they practice on that island. The voodoo and the different things like that, that are not, you know, what God told us to do. So then we have uh, Judah, who was mostly... Uh, you'll see the, a lot of the black Americans that are here today, we're the ones that were brought over the, in the transatlantic slave trade. A lot of us are from the tribe of Judah, Ephraim, 
you know, but a lot, most of our people are from the tribe of Judah. They knew who we were. So it's not like they just really just randomly say, okay, just, just bring some black people on the ships. No, they knew who we were because they knew we had built great kingdoms because this is not our first captivity. We were in captivity with uh, the Persians and all of these different people. This is like about the seventh captivity we've had. So a lot of us over here who are uh, black Americans, that's what they call us now. Um, we are from the tribe of Judah. Because remember, Abraham was a Chaldean. Chaldeans are black people. And um, they would be today's Iraqi people. So Abraham was taken from that group of people. And God said to him, I will make you a separate nation. He said, come out from among them. And I will make you a separate na nation. Because the Iraqis at that time were serving idol gods. So the Lord told him to come out from them. And he said, I'm gonna make of you a great nation, a great people. So we came out from amongst those people and we became the Hebrews and through Jacob, we became the Israelites. So we see that the different uh, tribes, Zebulun, uh, we see Zebulun is the people in like the P Panama Canal, Costa Rica, uh, Issachar is the Mexicans. Uh, Dan was the one that went along with Esau. So he eventually was kind of moved out of the 12 tribes because he worked along with Esau and like um, that Greek Orthodox type thing. He went along with uh, those things that were not uh, originally given to us through the commandments uh, in the Bible. Um, Asher, you know, has the Vene is basically Venezuela to Brazil. The, you know, the blacks that you see over there, they're the tribe of Asher, pretty much a lot of them. Naphtali, the Fiji, the Simones, uh, they are, um, you know, Hawaii, that those are the people from the tribe of Naphtali. Benjamin is the Caribbean people. Okay, and um, you know, on and on. We have, like I said, there's, there's 12 different tribes. So we all look different now, but we're going through the, the point where Christ is going to bring us back together. So the world has to go out of, out of course because it has really gone to the, the hill. We've never seen an election like this where they can't get it together. They don't know who won. <laughs> you know, they're saying this one won and they're still fighting and all of this kind of stuff. That's why I want to encourage you, don't put your trust in man. Don't do it. The Bible also talks in, uh, if you go to the book of Psalms, in the 20th chapter, I believe it is, and uh, the seventh verse, it says, we will rejoice in thy salvation, the fifth verse. In the name of our God, we will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. The right hand is power. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord. Let the king hear us when we call. Now, remember some trust in chariots and horses in biblical times. Remember when we escaped Egypt, they came after us with the chariots and the horses. But we remembered the name of the Lord our God. That's what brought us out of the captivity. Not anything else, not ourselves, because if it was just us depending on ourselves, we would have never made it. But our trusting in the Lord our God that's what brought us out. So that's what we need to do. We need to turn back. Like the Bible said, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, humble yourself, get over yourself, realize that the successes that you've had here is only because the Lord our God. Because when we got over here to this country, if you remember the slavery that we were in, come on now, they used to have on Sunday picnic day. 
And you know what day that was? That was pick an N-word day where they would uh, embarrass our men uh, by making them uh, do sexual things with their mothers, their, their, their family members, other men. They wanted to wipe us out. This is why they, you know, uh, force, try to force different uh, practices upon us is to wipe out our seed. And we need to wake up and realize that. It's not, oh, you know, people do what they do. No, there's a reason behind why they back a lot of things up. Because God, when God wanted, when God made us, he wanted us to uh, procreate and multiply. And I don't care what you do, you're not going to do it without the man and the woman. So when you see these different groups forming and, you know, saying, oh, you know, this and that, check out what's behind their agenda. Because some of these movements, even though they may be people of color, like we are, they're not in it for the right reason. They're in it to destroy so that they could do things their way. That's the same way that happened at the Tower of Babel. The, the people wanted to, uh, they, Nimrod, who was uh, at that time the leader, he, they wanted to be God. So they built that Tower of Babel to try to pull God and the angels down so that they could take over. So remember, we have to go back to our original uh, feasts. A lot of these, if you, if you really, if you go into uh, the actual feasts that God gave us from the beginning, all right, that's in the book of Leviticus. All of these feasts that they have here are a jump off of what we originally had. Originally, our feasts were the Passover, which was when we came out of Egypt, uh, when um, the angel uh, passed over those who put the sign of the blood of the goat on, on top of the lentil of the doors uh, so that we could pass over because the death angel had come because the Egyptians wouldn't let us go. They, wanted, <laughs> they just wanted to keep us in slavery. Okay, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay? Uh, the Feast of First Fruits, all of that has to do with around the time which they call Easter, okay? But their Easter has to do with idol worship here in this country. But uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread had to do with Christ's sacrificial offering of his body. Uh, the Feast of First Fruits being when he rose again from the grave uh, the memorial of blowing trumpets, uh, which basically um, is uh, the feast of trumpets. Uh, that was another time of the year for us, the day of atonement. Okay, the feast of tabernacles, uh, the feast of dedication, and the feast of Purim. All of these are different feasts, which I'll go into detail at another time. Uh, I'll have to do a teaching on those. Those were our original feasts. These feasts that we have now, think about it, Christmas. What's that about? That's not, that's about being, Christmas is just about people getting gifts. And I know they try to throw Christ in there like, oh no, this old little town of Bethlehem, this and that. Read up on that. That thing is about this country making money like crazy. Oh, you know, which gift is going to, uh, to make the most profit and all of that kind of stuff. Because if we were really celebrating like that, our gift would be our lives back to Christ. Because if he came and he died for us, then don't we owe him our lives? We don't, why should we, what are we doing getting a gift or get going out? Oh, my kids got to have 20 gifts and all of that. Yeah, come on, y'all. It's time for us to wake up. We are living in the last times. Soon judgment, well, judgment is really here. These different things that you see, and that's not coincidence, these fires and different things like that. Judgment is passing throughout the earth. And it's time for the Israelites, for us to wake up, wake up and smell the coffee because it is burning. It is high time. Christ is letting us know he's on his way back. 
And if we're not ready, those of us who are not ready will be left because there's going to come a time again of a wilderness situation where we will have to leave all that we have. I don't know if it'll be in our day and time, but we're going to go through another wilderness experience. And if you're not ready for it, you're going to be so stuck in this world that you will receive the mark of the beast. The Bible talks about it. He causes all great and small to receive a, a mark in his right hand or forehead. So if you're not ready, if you're not getting, uh, you know, uh, reading your Bible, if you're not getting to know the Lord, if you're not paying attention to the prophecies of the of the Bible, even our people being in the prisons, it talks about that in Isaiah, how this is why our young men are in prisons. It's that curse, but the curse is lifting up off of us. So you see us becoming more prosperous and things like that. When we leave this Egypt, we will leave with a high hand. But there are different things that we're going to have to maneuver through in the meantime, because they know that Christ is coming back and they don't want him to have anybody to come back for. So the time, the things are going to be intensified. They, you know, different things are going to happen. It's more than just this, just this pandemic and all of that kind of stuff, even with the pandemic. People are getting sick, but different things that they're telling us, come on now, let's, let's be real. Some of the things that they're telling us, it can't be true, okay? So we have to pay attention. We can't just uh, go for, you know, the okie dokie. We have to uh, investigate these things, look into these things, compare these things to scripture, um, you know, study the word of God and study you know, there are books even to uh, to let you know what's going on, what went on back then in Bible times. It's the same thing that's basically going on now. So we have to look up for our redemption draw if not. Christ told us that these things will come, that if we had to flee from one city, we have to flee from one city, go to the next one. Because time, perilous times are not coming. They're here. So God bless you. Uh, for listening in to that. Don't trust in man. Do not trust that the government can give you everything that you need. No, you're going to need the move of God in everything that you do because a time will come where they may shut everything down. And then what? What will you do then? I'm hoping that everybody uh, started their pantry, as I've been telling you all, get your food, get it all together, pack it away. You know, I have my closet of things because you don't know what's going to happen between even now and next summer. They may close all the, you know, the, the grocery stores and things like that. Talking about pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. And then what? Then they want you to, um, then they'll start saying, well, if you don't get this shot, you ain't going to be able to get no food. Well, if you don't, you know, do this, then if you don't, you know, adhere to their demands that they're not going to uh, allow you to go to work and stuff like that, then what will you do? So this is the time of Jacob's trouble and we have to, we got to pay attention to it. All right. So now we're going to get to back to our guest who has been on this show before. He's been on several times and he's from the Hero Book Series. Of course, you all know he and I went to school together. None other than Gerald L. Hoover. And he's going to be talking to us again about his book series. It's the 25th anniversary of the Hero Book Series. And we're going to uh, listen to what he has to say. Welcome back to the show, Gerald. Like, thank you for having me, uh, Miss Jones, CJ. Good to, see, good to be here with you. <laughs> yes, listen, that, it's always that, good. To that, see. Lesson, that lesson was awesome. I was, I was sitting there taking everything in. I said, okay. All right. It, it, it some, some very, very powerful stuff. And it's kind of weird when, like, you know the word, you know, you know, you know, you know the scripture, and you see it played out on the screen like that. That that's kind of like okay. That really just happened? Is that is that are they really saying that? And it's just weird. 
that you can read something in scripture and it happens. Meaning, like there are people out there are people out there playing that part. Yes. That like if they knew, okay, are you actually playing? Are you actually doing this? Is your mind actually allowing you to think this way? Because I'm, I'm not gonna say the person's name, but 45. I mean, you think about his mindset, it's, it's like it's like a pharaoh. I mean, literally, and, that's like a phrase. He just keeps coming, just keeps coming, just keeps coming, just keeps coming. Now, now for those who don't know the word or don't haven't read it, if they'll see the Ten Commandments and think Yul Brenner, who was Pharaoh, you know, walks off in the sunset after eight miles was destroyed. It didn't happen quite like that in, 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 in the '66. Okay, <laughs> so it was, in, in book number two, it didn't happen quite like that. So um, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's a foul stuff, and it's, it's funny, too, because our, our bishop, our, our former bishop, he, he went on home, home to see the Lord. He used to always tell us in the 70s and 80s about getting your pantry, you know, getting stock up in your canned goods and so forth. So it, it's going to be it's going to be very interesting. It, it's, it's Like I said, 2020, we said something off, off camera. 2020 is, uh, listen, you know, <laughs> I Take it back, <laughs> you know. Now we're gonna bring, but 2020 has been it's been it's been something different. It's been something different. So definitely, we have, we have to all stay prayed up and um, and uh, don't be fearful. No, be, be mindful. You know, that's be, right. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open. Your ears open, and uh, just you know, stay on the right side. That's right. Stay on the right side. Yeah, well, well my book, as you mentioned, um, it's in the 25th year anniversary. It's, it's funny because it's actually, we're sort of in our 28th, yeah, venture until the 28th. Uh, when I got it, when I got it printed, uh, my, uh, one of my publishers was telling me, how long has this book been out? And I, and I told her, she said, well, you know, this is, this is a collecting item. I'm like, you collect this item? He said, why don't you put a banner on it? And she showed me a book that had a banner that said 25th year anniversary. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do that. And, and I said, I said, I'm gonna keep the banner on until we go into 30. And 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 what I'll do is I'll um I'm gonna keep it like when we get in say year 29, maybe the last six months, I'll pull back the banner. So when it so when it comes out the 30, it's a fresh look. But what's interesting in that is that this book, the story, I started it when I was in high school. Well, I, I got I got on 84. I should have got on 83, but that's another story for another show, segment, all again. Mm -hmm. but, um, I got blessedly left back, which would, and I wasn't an academic stuff. I was more for being truant and being a silly young man. But I would have gotten out of school, high school, when I was 17, and I wasn't ready. I wasn't, I wasn't ready. I, I wasn't ready. Uh, so... I take that extra year, and my friend, my hero, the first part of the hero uh, book series, came into my life, and I'm like, right. okay, this is it was a purpose. And what's interesting was that I wasn't a real reader in high school. I was more of a, I wrote, I was a writer, but I wasn't a real reader. I, I, I we had a book report assigned to us. I would get the thickest book, read the inner notes, read maybe something, a couple of pages inside of it. Put some beautiful words or something, and get a do a book report. And I'm getting A's and B's all all like I I never got any less than a B plus really for a book report. Never in, in my entire life, I never did because I know how to put words and use eloquent endings, and I did all kind. Of, I was a good writer, but not a reader. It wasn't until I got that bug by older cousin of mine named Ron. He he put that reading into me, and I've been a reader ever since. But that was a blessing because what I had to learn was about being a better writer was reading was the the way to go about it. And what's powerful about reading, and this is what our young men particularly, because you, you said something that you you hit on something that was really, really deep about them trying, the system is trying to destroy us. And yes. I see the same methodology, but I see it with academia. I see it with reading and writing and processing. Yes. When you have young men, particularly of color, that graduate high school, 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, especially if they're in 
alternative school and they have a reading level of maybe third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade tops. They can't function. They can't put words together. It's not so much they're not intelligent or don't have intelligence with them, but they don't have something that exercise that muscle. And, and the brain works as a muscle. The same with your body. If you get a person who is a couch potato that's sitting on the couch is playing with the remote or playing with video games, then you say, okay, hey man, we're going to go work out. You're going to come with us? But first we're going to run around the track three times, four times, do a mile. You'd be like, well, that person get on the track a half a minute. I, I have, they they want to get halfway around the track before they ready to pass out. Same thing with the brain. If you don't use that part of the brain that helps you read, write, record things in your mind, uh, process things, create things in your mind, when you try to do it for the first time after a long period of time, you're going to get sleepy or you're going to get bored or you're going to push it away. Or, or, or right. it's, like, it's like giving a baby an infant a steak sandwich. Good luck with that. All right. So, and what's happening is that this digital crack, these phones, the uh, the computers, and 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 all your neighborhoods, you go to these schools, nothing but computers on every desk, nothing but computers. You go Silicon Valley where they made where the internet was kind of born. You go to other places on the other side of town. Those schools don't have all the computers in there because they, they they're still doing treehouse learning. They're still doing wow. brick and mortar learning. Which is really actually helping the brain. But you right. give you give our babies the, the digital crack or right? you press a button. So they can't process things. I mean, mm-hmm. bad, they took out reading and writing in schools or, or penmanship and, 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 and cultural writing. These kids can't sign their name. And, and my, I was I was I was I was out all day today. And I remember, oh my fact, I had to get a COVID test today for for, the, for a job assignment. Uh, I'm about to go. And I actually had to sign my name five times. Now these kids that these kids don't know how to sign their name. I know. I so know. they name print and block letters. So if you can't sign your name and you can't tell you can't tell time on the front, how are you going to process going to a job, filling an application? Exactly. Well, I mean, today I kid you not, CJ. I must have signed my name today. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. About 12 times in different different venues I was in today. Different venues wow. today. I'm serious. I'm going to sign my name about 12 times. This week alone, and we're in, what, Wednesday? Mm-hmm. I'm going to sign my name various venues I was in about 18 times. Now, if I couldn't sign my name, what would I do? Put an X? And see, reading is so powerful well, I, well, I'm going to get the scripture part. Scripture is on my level. But reading is so powerful because you have the benefit of getting what the writer wrote within minutes, seconds, days, weeks, months, even, especially if the big, that's what we are, mm-hmm. big. But that person may have taken years to write. Yes. That's what I'm saying. It may be, let me, if you know what I do, I'll give you an example. That's in my book, my friend, my hero, the, the, the first book. And in the, the first three pages, I have a, I have a situation where a, 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 the character is sitting at Mount Vernon Hospital. No, no, I'm sorry, he's not at Mount Vernon Hospital. And he's talking about an incident that happened in, in, uh, when they were kids. I kid you not, see that. It may be 150 words for that whole scene, maybe. Mm-hmm. Take you about a minute to read that, if that. But I was in my Vernon hospital in an emergency room sitting mm-hmm. down getting information for about 16 hours. Not at one time. I went there about four times and I sat there for hours and just sat there, took notes, sat there. I went there late at night. I went there early in the morning. I went there in the afternoon and I went in the evening just to see the kind of clientele that was coming in, what, what happened, what, what was seen. I took notes to what I did. Now, from them 16 hours, I convinced that whole scene into a minute. Yeah. And you're getting the virtue of all of my research, all of my time that I spent. That's right. the part about writing, about reading, because you're getting the virtue, like scripture, you're getting the virtue of what I've taken 
Moses or somebody 40 years to complete. Yeah. But you're getting all that in a capsule. But you're getting the power and the spirit and the virtue mm-hmm. and the energy that took that it took that person to do. Mm-hmm. This is why you're smarter. I'm giving you a secret. You may not even know, you may know this, but you're, you, you, you will learn. It is said that mm-hmm. most CEOs read 50 books a year. 50. The one Buffett's in the world, he, he, he's a, I mean, he's worth $80 billion, but he reads like a maniac. And they say most employees read two. A year. Yeah. Most CEOs read 50 books a year. Yeah. And most employees read two. Mm-hmm. I, I would have been, I would have been fine if it was 50 to 35. Right. I'm taking that. I mean, you know what? I would have taken 50 to 25. He's just, he's just what, two books a month somewhere about, you know what I mean? But two a year? True. And it's hard to get young men of color, particularly, to read a book. And that is, and that is one of the anomalies that's one of the things that's I don't want to say I don't even use the word anomaly. That is one of the mechanisms that kill us. Because if you don't have knowledge, then you don't have power. True. If you don't, if you don't have power, you can't move anything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Power. And power doesn't necessarily mean physical power. Right. Power is energy. Yes. Power is a thought. Power is being able to sit and process things, meditation, and watch stuff happen. Yeah. Power is being able to be still and trust the process of God. Okay. I planted the seed. Now I'm gonna watch him make that work. Exactly. You have the knowledge to do that. It doesn't work. You stay. No. Strict, you stay. You stay. You stay in a dark place. And and you know you know about the, uh, the correction system. Mm-hmm. Too many young men and women become scholars behind a seven by ten, or and why are you doing seven by ten? Doing seven to ten in a seven by ten. True. True. Yeah, it that is. doesn't work, CJ. It, it, because then you put yourself even further behind the eight ball. Now you may have some knowledge, and you may have a zeal for power, but with that record and being your color, you're fighting sideways now. Yeah, you're fighting sideways. I mean, you got That's strength, right. but you fight. You're punching sideways. You're not punching this way. You're punching sideways. So when it when it when it gets like that, then it makes it, it makes things harder. And if you're not developing your gift, okay, if you're not developing your gifts, because everybody's gifted with something. Mm-hmm. You can even be a person with autism. If they have some kind of functionality to them, they have a gift to do something. They sure do. Now, a person that may not be gifted, may a per- maybe a person that may be totally mute, but like, uh, what Miss Keller had a, had a gift. Yes, and what, what, what she was what mute and what blind. I mean, she had all kinds of issues. But she, she did. Had, there's a gift that's inside you, but mm-hmm. if you brave with you, then you didn't do your job. That's right. You did not do your job if your gift goes to the grave with you. That's but right. What has to happen is that systemically, you have to turn young men and women on to reading. But it's hard to break through that that ironclad wall. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say it's hard. I don't use that word. It's a challenge of getting mm-hmm. through that ironclad wall when everybody is pressing the button to get results. Pressing the button to get results. You press the button to get results. Press the button to get a result. But these kids are growing up to be functionally illiterate. Yes, they are. And it, it is so scary. And you see it with people, the way people email you, the way they text you, the way they speak, it, 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 it's scary. And then what happens is they become, you know, teenagers, young adults, and they, they get older, and hormones rage and what have you. They start having relations. Then they breathe. They conceive. They breathe. Yeah. And if you're not on a concept of education and getting bigger stuff better, then your child won't be that way either. Yeah. That's so true. They'll grow up that way. And then, then the next generation will grow up that way. And mm-hmm. the people on the other side are looking at us like we got problems. We have problems. 
Mm-hmm. But the problems was health. Yeah. But if you look at it, we're almost from an academic, well, I really believe this. Back in slavery time, they didn't want us to read and write because, like I said, the knowledge would have brought power. Right. I don't believe it was so much that it was the A, Bs, and Cs of the world, of, of, of everything, because that would have been another level level as well. But I really believe that if you, they were, they were saying that if you awaken these so-and-so's in words, you know, they, they told the callers, mm-hmm. then they go, if you awaken them, if they get woke, mm-hmm. reading, writing, and processing, and surely, CJ, somebody knew how the brain worked back then. This wasn't just a matter of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No, no, it's a little deeper than that. They mm-hmm. knew, they read stuff and figure things out that's in these books and they get confidence, then they're going to kill us. Well, they knew that. That's why they knew if they uh, they had to, to wash our history out. They had to tell us that we were somebody else. They had to tell us they went through that phase of telling us that we had come from monkeys uh, that they saved us from Africa, which is the richest continent. We came from the richest continent mm-hmm. in the earth. Africa is, is the mother of, of all, be- you know, that's where everything was created. So they knew that they had to do everything they could once they got us here because they even lied about that saying that we just came, we, we came with them and all that. No, they tricked us to get on those boats and to be led over here to this, to this place where what they even lied about that because they made it seem as if this was a, a place that was their own, but they took over this country from a group of people who were black Indians who were a part of the 12 tribes. They have been here hundreds of years because our scattering started early. So the the tribe of us who were the black Indians that were over here, even the one who they claim came over here and founded this place said that when he got here, he saw them. He said they were black Indians and he used to trade with them and some of the Africans that would come back and forth because we had the the spears with the gold tips on them. So they had to wash that out of history. Like black people, how is it that they come from this continent that's so rich with gold, with animals, with Africa's rich and it has everything. So they knew that we had created kingdoms, dynasties, and that at one time we even ruled Europe. Because King James, remember, they lied about him and said that he was, uh, they said he was a a white person who, um, you know, was homosexual or whatever. But he wasn't. He was a black Scottish nobleman. His father was a king and so his mother was a queen. They killed him because he wouldn't agree with how they were trying to change the Bible around. Because he got together those scholars and he even says it in his book, the uh, 1611 version, why he brought that book together, because he saw where we wouldn't know who we were, because he comes directly from the line of King David. So he had that Bible put together. Plus, in that Bible was the apocryphal books. So those are the books that they tried to scare us away from. Oh, no, don't read those books. Because those books describe them and everything that they're doing now. That, 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 book, it, it, that book will make them the head stand up on their head. That, yes. that, 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 that book make your head stand up on your head. Not through fear, but just in bewilderment. Like, what just, wow. what just read? It, 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 it's, it, it's wild. And don't forget now, uh, the Garden of Eden, part of that was in Africa. All so, of it. All of it that when that split, you're gonna split, so you you had you had that as well. Uh, so th- there's a lot of rich history, but again, as you and I are speaking, our young men, particularly, aren't even listening to that, unfortunately. I so, know, so, so not only not only are they not reading it, they're not even hearing it, so they can form and appreciate them. Because I'm thinking, like, 
even if they heard it, if they saw a video of it, uh, heard it on audio, and they got intrigued by it, and they said, okay, well, we'll do some research. Let's go, go okay, and then, and, and see, you know, what another thing happens too, CJ, is that people don't even know how to read a dictionary. People don't, don't know how to research. People don't know how to say, okay, let me go in and dig this out and find out how this thing works. Mm-hmm. I mean, these young men, I'm, I'm saying the men because the men are the leaders. These right. young men, well, they should be leaders. Uh, mm-hmm. And don't respect the women. I'm just saying. No, like, no, it's true. That right. That's the order of God. Right. Now, when, when their hands are tied behind their back or if their hands are so full of other things, it's almost like picking up a BB with a, with a boxing glove. You, you know how many to do it. You may see it, you may see it's there, but you try to do it, you can't. That boxing glove doesn't have fingers like that. And that BB is too small for you to grab it. You know what I mean? And so, it, it, and then when frustration mounts, then you start doing things to your fellow brother because you're frustrated and you don't know yeah. how to process it. And, and it's going to take an awakening because my fear and I, I just had a grandbaby too. Hi, Naomi. Uh, oh, congrats! Uh, yeah, yeah, that's my, 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 my little buttercup. I haven't seen her yet because because of the COVID. That my 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 my, grand, my grandbaby, my my son and daughter in law, daughter in love. I say they they live out in Texas, but I'm looking to go oh, see them. Wow. Soon. But, um, but I'm thinking I'm fearing that when she gets older, there can be too many black young men to to for her to marry. Because yeah. the way the system is, is, is challenging these young boys, they're killing each other or they're growing mm-hmm. up not using the faculties that they need so they're not growing up to their, to their fullest potential. And I was telling someone the other day, you think about it, TJ, we don't have a lot of rich uncles. We don't have a lot of uncles that have uh, uh, stores or, or, or plumbing businesses or something like that or somewhere they can kind of go in and just jump into. We don't have that. So a lot mm-hmm. of our men and our babies, they graduate high school and don't have where to go. They don't have where to go. And, and yeah. all it takes is because the situation, you know, is there. If you get a parent or a guardian that says, well, we can't do something because we can't afford it. Once you hear that, your whole ambition stops. The minute you hear that, when that confidence gets siphoned out, siphoned out of you, it's a wrap. And, 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 and of course, the knowledge of knowing how to speak what to speak, when to speak, yes, and, and the way to speak. If you don't have that knowledge, because even if you haven't read it in scripture, call mm-hmm. them, I thought they were, uh, you know, about having faith, but I, about having definitely having power of the tongue. I mean, if you don't understand those principles, mind you, any motivational speaker has the same principles, but that's all biblical. It's all biblical. Right. That's, all, that's all biblical. You speak in the word or say in the word so that. It can manifest itself, but that one thing that most people do not have, they operate with no confidence. And True. I'm going to quick and down. I'm, I'm going to show you my, my curriculum because we're going to have a few, few minutes left. I know. When to me, when God spoke the world to be, He didn't speak faith through faith. I, might, I think I might say this before when I was on your, on your show because faith, he, faith was Him. He already existed. Okay. Right. If you, if you read in Hebrews, faith is everything is uh, uh, faith is something of, of things hoped for, of things not seen. If you look at it from that perspective, if you were to change the word faith to the word God, to, to, mm-hmm. to, to the word God in, in a sense, if you change that word from faith to God and see how that process is in your mind, mm-hmm. God doesn't have to have faith. He is that. Right. You just have to believe it. This right. is why I, when I believe he spoke the words light be he spoke with confidence what mm-hmm. faith his, his thought process was i'm saying it and it's happening mm-hmm. now that's not faith talking that's confidence you already believed it but you're speaking that in a matter of fact like this is done mm-hmm. completely that's confidence that ain't faith no. talking. faith is that mechanism but that's that voice is confidence. confidence. People don't know how to use that. And this is why sure. I came up with, I was blessed to come up with a concept I call the vitamin C's for success, which is confidence, commitment, courage, consistency, and composure. 
when you have those five, and you can start off with anything, start off with composure, start off with consistency, start off with courage, start off with commitment, you'll get confidence. You start off with commitment, you start off with either anywhere of those, any one of those five that you start off with, you'll end up with confidence because a confident man doesn't lose his composure. Right. A confident man is always consistent. Confident man, confidence man, confident man is always always has courage, even in the face of fear. And sure. a confident man is always committed. Now mm-hmm. use the same thing. Committed man always has confidence. Committed man always has courage. So committed man always composure. And I'm like, when God gave me that thing, I think it was a slap in the face because mm-hmm. game came for me. And I needed that, especially when starting right now, when I wrote this book, it was 1983. I had nothing to write on. I, I basically had a dream to write. I had to write on right by hand. Didn't have a computer. We didn't have we didn't have computers like that in our home anyway. We we had typewriters, but I didn't have yeah. that. I had to write by hand. It took eight years to get, well, nine years from the time I started it to get published from 83 to, 90, to 91. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, 83 to 92. Okay. And I got rejected over 40 something times, but yet I'm celebrating almost 30 years of being a print. Now, not only that, I got, this is book one, My Friend, My Hero. I got book two, which is He Was My Hero too. And book three, A Hopeful Hero. And book four, when it's finished, is called Hoop Hero. And this takes place in Fourth Street Playground. So oh, so this, yeah. the, the, the backdrop is my Vernon High School. Now, I have what's called a success guidebook, where, remember I told you about reading and writing? You have right. to read and write through here. All right? Good, I, good. I have an answer key to this, too, for teachers to be able to do what they do. I even right. have one for book two. Good. So I'm ready. Book three is on its way. So my my position is I don't only want to entertain, I want to empower, I want to enlighten, and, and I really want to endear myself to these young men and women that read this book, even if I don't see them. So right. that, now, now it's weird, before the pandemic hit, schools were buying it, and they were buying it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I wasn't buying, they, now I think one school bought 60, but other schools were buying over hundreds. You know, okay. they, they, they were buying them like say for the whole eighth grade or the whole tenth grade, the whole whatever, and uh, that's been a blessing. And, and but when the pandemic hit, it, I wouldn't say it slowed down. I had to get adjusted, and and came home one day, had an order for another school. And, and I, I mean, it's, it's it's still coming out there. Now I'm doing things from a brick and mortar standpoint, meaning I might. I mean, this is gonna have to go online at some point, but I really right. want the teachers to work with the young men and women with their hands. You know what I mean? Go through and let these kids, like, they, they, they're thinking hey, that they got to use a dictionary for. Like, use a dictionary. All right? right. Learn Google the word, but write things down because studies show when you write things down by hand, you memorize them better. Sure. All right? So just write. And, and so I'm going old school with it and it's needed. You know, it is. This, this, my, my son once told me, well, about, about maybe three years ago, he said, Dad, when your book first came out, mind you, he was only one year old at that time. He yeah. said, your book was needed and it was appreciated back, uh, back then. That, that's is why, this is why it carried over you know, this long. He said, but now it's really necessary. And he's educated, him, him his wife and my, my daughter, they're, they're, um, they're educators, one in high school. Mm-hmm. He said, it's necessary. It is necessary. It sure and, is, and I realized that why I, I ask my why I, I don't ask now because I know why did it take me eight years to get the book published. Why did I get rejected so many times? Why did I go through this? Why did I write the first nine drafts by hand? Why did I spend summer days where it was eighty five degrees and sunny in a house in the projects on writing on the ironing board and I, and my friends are outside? Why? Because you have to do things this day, and you have to speak to young men and women that will need the energy that you you have so that these young men and women will have a way to go uh, about doing stuff. Uh, how you get my books, and I, I'll say is I have a website, mm-hmm. the Hero Book Series.com, and uh, you can go through it. And it's a, I mean, all, all, all the pages are very fascinating. At least I, I think so. There, I have video trailers of, the, of each book. So you can, if you go to the book section where it says view trailer, you can mm-hmm. see like a 90 second trailer like it's like a commercial of what the book's about and um 
I, I love the way it was put together. And um, we're going to do some powerful things with it as God will bless and open up the, these passages for me to, to go through. And um, it, it's, it's a great journey. Great journey. Listen, how can they you? How can they get in the, you know, contact you? Maybe they want you to come to, you know, something at their um, facility, well, well, something the, like that. Yeah, with how the, um, with the, with the website, the, the, I, I gave you the website, right? Was you able to hear the, or the, the, the screen freeze? Did you hear, did you hear the website? Well, I'll say it again. Uh, yeah, the go there. Huh? Yeah, yeah. And, and it says, I have a contact page. I have a contact page. So they, they can go on the okay. contact page and they, they can find me there. As a matter of fact, it was funny. Um, before the pandemic hit, too, a, a librarian from Missouri. No, was it Missouri? No, Louisiana. Monroe, Monroe, Louisiana was trying to get me to come out there to do some stuff. And uh, we, we, we were making plans to do it. But the pandemic hit, and um, so we had to revisit it. But yeah, uh, uh, so people have gone to the website, saw things that they like, and tried to get back in contact with me, and uh, it's been a powerful thing. Okay, oh, good, good, good. Well, Gerald, we are so glad that you, you know, came back and um, you're sharing that book series because that is definitely, you know, a great, great thing. Um, a lot of young men need it, and like I said. I see where that attack has been on our men. And that's why, because we were once the, the we were once the head of everything. So we got to get back to that. Um, there are, you know, listings and things like that that we could we could we could look up how our people are progressing. Um, you mentioned Texas. Texas is an area where a lot of blacks are really up and coming. Um, the Black Excellence list, that's a list comes out every week. And I'm seeing more and more Black communities because we got to learn to keep our dollar in our communities. And we got to learn to keep our young people moving forward. Especially and, and see, Jay, let, me, let me say something. I know we'll, 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 we have about a minute left. And this is not to exclude anyone else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so oh, no, 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 no. Uh -uh. It's not about living in a bubble, but it's just a matter of you understanding how to appreciate and how to work. Within a certain exactly. frame, you know yes. what I mean, and, and so, so, so I agree with that. We need to know how to do that. Yes. Well, Gerald, as as <laughs> usual, you're always going to be welcome to come back to the show. Thank you for uh, coming again, and you know, sharing with us because we definitely need your input. Um, you know, uh, and and again, I always tell people, you know, that I love everybody. I don't have nothing against nobody, but my own people, I got to, I got to be there. I got to be there for my people. If I can't be there for my people, how am I going to be helping other people? You Amen. know. So, thank you all for tuning again to the Crystal Jones Show. Um, we, you know, we like I said, we're so glad that you continue to support the show. So continue to to you know come back. We have new episodes, a lot of new episodes that are coming up. You'll see them on uh, Sundays at two thirty. So um, if you need to get in touch with me, you know the Crystal Jones Show at gmail.com. Until the next time, God bless you. God keep you as my prayer and you stay balanced. God bless you. Amen. Stop using church intimidation, control and manipulation. Jezebel and all them spirits fall back, not trying to hear it. Go with Jesus, walk in peace. On your pew can sit that beast that we're fighting in the world. I'm that JC Supergirl, Jesus Christ, belt of truth, arm of God, I'm slaying you. Power of the word to a sword, MC heaven rocks for her Lord. Thought they crept in unaware, didn't see the gatekeeper standing right there. Not getting down with your tactics, undoctrinal.